So today I'm going to talk about um, what we've what Dorado is and all the latest improvements we've been doing in Dorado and some of the future directions. So first of all, what is Dorado? So primarily Dorado powers Oxford Nanopore base calling. So it converts raw signal into DNA or RNA bases as nucleotides translocate across the nanopore. They produce a signal which we can interpret and produce the most likely sequence of DNA or RNA bases. It does other things too though, so it can detect modified bases. We can detect eight modified bases in total in both DNA and RNA. We can do poly A tail length estimation, adapter and primer trimming, barcode demultiplexing, alignment read correction. We can produce sequencing summary files. So Dorado is a lot more than just a base caller. No. One thing that I often like to clarify is the distinction between standalone Dorado and Dorado integrated in Minnow. So standalone Dorado is a command line application. It's available, it's open source and available on GitHub. And you know, the kind of people that want to use Dorado standalone are people who want our latest features. They might want to run on, a, on their institution's compute cluster. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. But Dorado is also integrated into Minnow. So the underlying libraries that power the command line application are integrated into Minnow. And this is how most users interact with Dorado. They don't even necessarily know that they're using Dorado, but they are. So what's new in Dorado? Over the last few months since London Calling, we've primarily worked on five core things. So first of all, on base calling, we're happy to announce today that we have faster DNA and RNA models. We know that this is a pain point for some of our customers, and so we're very happy to talk about new advancements in that regard. On modified bases, we've got new all-context inosine and M5C models, which my colleague Bronya Boyden will be speaking about in much more detail. And we've also updated our M6A pseudouridine, 4MC, 5MC, 5HMC, and M6MA models for improved accuracy. We've made lots of improvements to read correction. This is something we were very happy to talk about at London Calling earlier this year. We've also improved uh, barcode demultiplexing. So barcode demultiplexing, it's not the most glamorous part of Dorado. It's not the most exciting bioinformatics stuff. You know, algorithm to talk about, but it is crucial to many of our customers, and we well know it, as we well know. On the poly A front, uh, we spoke about poly A uh, calling at London Calling earlier this year, and we've made lots of improvements, which I'll detail now. So on poly A, Dorado provides support for poly A uh, for poly A le tail length estimation in direct RNA and poly T, le poly -T length tail length estimation in cDNA. In Dorado 0.7, we, we added support for circular plasmids and support for interrupted tails. That is, when some fraction, some small fraction of the nucleotides in a poly A tail are not themselves A bases. Now in Dorado 0.8, we've added support for per barcode interrupted tail length configurations. This is something that many of our pharmaceutical customers have asked us for, and we're happy to pronounce that, we, that this is now available in the latest version of Dorado. We've also made quite nice improvements to our poly A tail length estimation, so the accuracy of poly A tail length estimation is improved, and the handling of interrupted tails is also improved. Quite a few people at this conference have come up to me to speak about SUP base calling. So people have said, you know, we love the SUP model, it's so accurate, Q26, it's great, um, but it's quite slow. And it, it you know, it, we are aware of that. We are aware that it is, it is slow. To those people, I would say that for the vast majority of users, we honestly believe that hack is the most appropriate model to use. It keeps up on device, it's Q20 accuracy, Q20 and above. And so most people should be using hack. However, I'm also aware that, you know, we've got the more accurate model. There will be a significant number of people who will use the more, more accurate model. And so we've made nice speed improvements to the sub model on A100 GPUs, which is our sort of workhorse GPU, the one that we provide with our sequencers, with our Promethean sequencers. How have we achieved these speed ups? So we've done, we've worked a lot on optimized data handling. So we've improved how data is organized and accessed in GPU memory. Typically, when you want to speed something up on GPU, this is the first place you go. How is the data organized? How is it accessed? And that's because accessing, reading, and writing GPU memory is slow. We've worked a lot on customized mathematical op operations. So a lot of low-level CUDA, CUDA code, a lot of low-level GPU optimization to speed up our, um, our deep learning work there. 
also combining a lot of processing steps. So typically when you have, you know, neural network type architectures, which is what we use in base calling, you might have one step, one, we call it a layer followed by another one. And by combining these two into one, one, um, one component, you typically can get nice speed ups, which is what we've seen here. And finally, we've exploited the literature, latest advancements in research into transformers to use updated, uh, what we call the attention mechanism, the attention algorithm. It's, um, it's a core component of the transformer model. It's a mathematical object that, we, that people have done a lot of work to optimize. So we've used a lot of latest advancements from literature to speed up our transformer models and consequently our sub base colors. So this is available in Dorado today. We're not done yet. We are gonna make this a lot faster. Um, so you can expect further speed ups over the coming months. On the read correction front, we were very happy and excited to announce advancements in read correction at London Calling. So read correction is based on uh, Dorado Correct is based on the Hero tool, which was developed by Mila Sikic's group in Singapore. We've done some nice updates. So we've separated mapping and mapping and inference stages for more flexible workflows. So if you've got um, you know, a cluster with CPU, CPU nodes and GPU nodes. You can run mapping on the CPU nodes and inference on the GPU nodes. We've improved multi-threading performance, increased determinism in, align in alignment. We've improved handling of repetitive regions, which is very important. So in centromeres, you get much nicer read correction now. So read correction, it's something that we recommend exclusively exclusively for the, the task of assembly people often ask me you know can we use read correction for variant calling can we use read conduction for other stuff you can it's not something we recommend uh, we recommend it for assembly at least for the time being so if you want to use read correction for something else i'd say caveat emptor you can try it but it's not what it's not tested and it's not what we recommend so on the modified base front, I always like to emphasize how incredible it is that you can do modified base detection with Oxford nanopore sequencing. It's entirely in software. A methylated nucleotide perturbs the signal, the current trace, in a subtly different way to an unmethylated one, meaning that in purely in software, we can distinguish between eight different types of nucleotide. And I, I think that's wonderful. I think it's, it's one of the most beautiful uh, aspects of nanopore sequencing. Um, we have made some improvements to methylation calling, which I'm going to talk about in my next slide. And we've also added two new mod, mods, mod bases in RNA, which my colleague Bronnie will be speaking about. I'd like to highlight uh, ModKit, which is not part of Dorado. It's, a, it's an external tool, which we publish on GitHub. If you're, uh, if you're doing research into, um, into mod bases, it's kind of a Swiss army knife for modified bases. And my colleague Art Rand will be presenting a poster in the poster session later today. So if you have any questions about ModKit, please uh, watch this poster, see, go see the poster and speak to Art. I said we've made some advancements in, in DNA uh, mod base accuracy. And what we've identified was a subtle issue where in the neighborhood of methylation, we had slightly higher likelihood of calling, of incorrectly calling a methylated base. The effect was not substantial enough to affect headline accuracy, but we've made an improvement here. If you've got if you've met, if you've got mod call data, you may not want you know it might not be worth your time to uh, to re mod call all your data for such a subtle for such a subtle improvement. But if you're wondering what the V2 models are about, they primarily fix this issue in DNA. So what's next in Dorado? Enhancements are coming in three main three main places. So further enhancements to things like speed. We're going to have faster DNA models, faster RNA models faster modified base calling. We're aware that modified base calling is too slow for many customers, and we're working on some really exciting novel, novel deep learning architectures to improve modified base calling speed. Read correction and alignment are gonna get faster. Feature integration in Minnow. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, things reach Minnow a few weeks or months after they reach standalone Dorado. So all the stuff I've spoken about, new base calling models, poly A tail length estimation, new RNA mod, call, mod models, they're all going to be reaching um, Minnow in a few weeks time. And finally, we want to work on improved end-to-end -end analysis. So our vision for Dorado is that for many people, it's the only tool you need for your primary and secondary analysis um, needs. And so over the coming months, we're going to be working on variant calling and consensus calling in Dorado. We don't want to just take an existing tool and wrap it up. We want to really think about variant calling and think about the nuances of nanopore sequencing. Think about how those nuances can be exploited in a variant caller, in a consensus caller. So over the coming months, we're going to have some really exciting updates about how you can use variant calling and consensus calling for improved and faster variant calling and consensus calling in Dorado. 
And on that, I'd like to thank you for your time and attention.